Jinx is a pretty interesting Pokemon, and I wasn't sure where to fit it in. So in December, it feels like the right place for an Ice-type Pokemon. So guys, I want you to get ready. I want you to pucker up. I don't want you to look away. I want you to look dead in its eyes. And we're going to do the best that we can today with Jinx. And really quickly at the start of the video, let me just go ahead and say that likes and comments do help the channel grow the most. So whether you are a new viewer or a returning subscriber like D-Man, and you want to show me some support, you can tell me how you think Jinx will do down in the comments. Or if you don't know what to say, just scroll down and type in Smooch, because we're going to be doing some kissing today. The name for this run will be Waifu, because Jinx is everyone's favorite Generation 1 Waifu. And from there, let's just talk about a couple of things. Having the psychic typing, you would think it's pretty good, and if you look down at these stats, you'll see that 95 speed and special are both really good. We're in yellow version today, and I picked it for the easier Brock split, because if we also look at the pretty subpar 50 attack and the really bad 35 defense, you can tell that this one could be pretty rough, because if you look over at that learn set, you see that we only start with Pound, and we have Lovely Kiss. Now, Lovely Kiss is a Sleep Powder clone, 75% accurate, sleep-inducing move. We know Sleep is very overpowered in Gen 1, but it really doesn't matter for Brock because he has about 37 full heals, and with only 10 power points, we're just not going to do much with it. My worst fear in the early game is that I'm going to have to grind up to level 18 to get Lick so it's not resisted. So very early I start to grind Wild Pokemon. I knew this run might be in a little bit of trouble when I ran into this level 4 Rattata and I almost died. So from there I just knew that I had to be a little bit more careful. Now it's worth noting before we go any further that this run will be broken up into two parts. The bulk of the video is going to be this first run here that's a blind first attempt run with no preparation whatsoever. And then when that's over, I will do an optimized run that will try to bring down the time for the final tier list. So don't click off after the end. The first big stop in the run is the optional rival fight. And we have Lovely Kiss. Even though it's not good on Brock like I just mentioned, it's still really good to kind of cheese our way through some trainers that probably would be too tough if we didn't have it. So you can see that I put both Pokemon to sleep and I just pound away at them. And you can see on the Eevee specifically that I just really don't do a lot of damage, but I do make it through. We get some much needed levels here. I battle some wild Pokemon here and there, and by the time I get done with the final Bug Catcher in Viridian, I am level 11. And at this point in the run, since it's blind, I'm a little optimistic, and let's see what, how it's gonna look going ahead. With that beautiful, lovely kiss in hand, I do make it past the Light Years Junior Trainer, and now, I'm just gonna see what happens when you take on Brock at level 12. Maybe I'll be really surprised today. And the result is that I get absolutely blasted. I stand zero chance, and it's looking like a very high possibility that we do need to get to level 18 for Lick. But let's just keep grinding. We'll come back and we'll keep assessing the situation, and we'll see if that's gonna be the case. I come back once again at level 14 after grinding some wild Pokemon, and I get absolutely obliterated again, but I never learned my lesson, so I figured since level 15 with the damage rounding and the increased damage, maybe I stand a chance then, and I get destroyed too, but at level 15, you can actually make it past the Geodude. The problem is I pretty much have a sliver of health, and I'm just hobbling into the Onyx, and there's just no chance. So it's looking very likely that we're going to get to level 18. So without wasting more time, I decide to get to that level. And we finally hit it. Now we can not only kiss, but we can also lick. So now, let's see if we're ready for the rock solid Pokemon trainer. As for the Geodude, there's really no strategy here. We're just gonna lick and lick and lick until we're victorious. And when it's all said and done, we are at 40 HP out of 60. We are moving on to the Onyx. The strategy here is pretty simple. You want to use Lovely Kiss. You just wanna kiss all over this Onyx. And when Brock depletes his five full heals, you want it to stay asleep, and then you just slowly lick it down. It really doesn't sound good. Jinx really doesn't have great moves to describe. I'm doing my best here, so please don't make fun of me in the comments for talking about kissing and licking rock snakes. It, it is what it is. But eventually, it works. We do get kind of low in the process, and I take the first badge, and hopefully, it gets a little bit better from here. 
Since we had to get so many extra levels, the next route isn't that interesting. We're still having to utilize our attack stat, we're still using Lick, we're still using Pound. And let's skip ahead just a little bit into Mount Moon. And I can go ahead and be man enough to admit right now, I make a huge mistake here. I skip Mega Punch. And since we're having to rely on this attack stat, you can see on the side here, until level 31 with Ice Punch, at that point it won't even matter because we'll already be halfway through the game. Uh, it just hurts a lot. It's a pretty powerful move, and we could have definitely used it. And this is pretty much the, the first point of contention to where on the next run, I know I need to fix that. We can skip over the rest of Mount Moon, and we go straight into rival number two. Now the main thing here is you just don't want to get growled. When you're heavily reliant on your attack stat only at this stage in the game, getting growled is pretty much a death sentence. But Lovely Kiss connects, and we're able to move past onto the annoying little sand rat. And it does get off some damage to me, but the important thing, like always, is I avoid any sand attacks. I get a Lovely Kiss to connect, and I'm able to get past one rat, and we're into the next rat. And you guys have seen enough rival number two fights just to know that if you don't get sand attacked in red and blue, or you avoid the grounds and sand attack in yellow, it's a pretty free fight, and we don't have to go over the rest of it, but I do get past, and that's pretty big because now we can move on to Nugget Bridge. And this segment's not gonna be hard. Instead, let me just talk a little bit more about Mega Punch. Obviously, it would have just hit a lot harder, and it would have made fights a lot faster, and in a microcosm of that one battle, you can imagine how it would be stretched here. I often talk about how Nugget Bridge contains the single biggest cluster of mandatory battles in the game, and if you can speed that up in any way, you're gonna make your runs much more efficient, and on my first blind run here, I make it much worse by not picking up that move. But we don't need to see the rest of it. We know how it goes. A bunch of Pidgeys, a bunch of Rattatas. Let's just skip ahead. With very weak attacks and low defense, I do have one reset on Nugget Bridge, but it's not worth going into. And instead, we can arrive at Misty and take a look at that. Now I am over leveled here, and as for the star you, there's really not much to say. I just pound it down. I don't go for lovely kiss or anything. I save all my little smooches for star me. Obviously, if it crits, it's gonna hurt a lot, even though we have really high special. So the play here is to smooch this little star, give it a little and put it to sleep. And we have double slap. It's not really worth mentioning. Multi-hit move. It's okay, I do use it in this spot, but overall. Keep the star me to sleep, slap it down, and you move on, get another badge. Afterwards, like with a lot of runs, we do get Bubble Beam. It's gonna be pretty much our only huge coverage move, and for a run like this that don't really have any moves, it's just the first time that we get to use our special stat, and that's pretty exciting. It's a pretty big upgrade for Jinx. And you can pretty much see the power level increase. Normally, when you look at this junior trainer with three Pidgeys, I don't think would even if we had Mega Punch, I'm not sure if it would be a one shot, but Bubble Beam is just a bunch of easy one shots. And finally, we're picking up a little steam here. And we keep that rolling down to the SSN, where we get access to Body Slam. Even though I've talked about the weak attack all game, it's really hard. Very rare that you would pass up on Body Slam, and today is no exception. So we're grabbing it, we're getting rid of that pathetic double slap, and we're also going to get the rare candy behind the gentleman as well. And this takes us straight into rival number three. Now, I sang the praises of Bubble Beam. It's really not that great of a move, but it's just night and day from how the run started. And it's on full display here. We pretty much one shot everything minus the Eevee, and we can just move on really quickly from this battle. And from there, we can go straight to the master of trash cans himself, Lieutenant Surge. He only has a single Raichu in yellow, and he has bad AI for some unknown reason. And even though I almost get my head kicked off by Mega Kick, four Bubble Beams does do the trick. There's no resets here. We can keep it cruising. We are so close to the promised land. While I was doing the run, I was worried about the Junior Trainer with all the rapping Pokemon. That's totally not a lass at all. And it turns out to not really be that bad. I don't really get hurt at all. I do get paralyzed, but Body Slam is sufficient enough. And I'm only really putting it in because I thought it would be hard. I thought it would be something that you might have to plan for on the optimizer run, but it turns out to not be the case. And that's always a pleasant surprise. From there, we can skip over Rock Tunnel. Everything is very easy in there. And we can skip ahead to Celadon, where you guys already know that business is about to pick up. But before we get to that, I do take a quick little visit to the Rocket Hideout. 
I pick up the high money items and I do learn Ice Punch for one battle. We get Ice Punch for pretty much one battle against Giovanni and it's really strong. And it's worth noting that Ice Punch isn't a unique move, but only Jinx learns it and Hitmonchan learns all the elemental punches. So like Electabuzz, Magmar, Jinx, they all get their respective punches. And it's a pretty good move, but we're just not gonna use it. We're about to get Ice Beam in a second. Anyway, Giovanni's straight trash. We can move on. From there, it's time to visit the Celadon Pokemart. And the first thing I do after selling is to pick up a Pokedoll for Mimic in the future. I pick up Ice Beam for personal use and the other TMs just to sell for money. And for this run, I pick up four Calciums to lean on our strongest stat. And I go ahead and I learn Ice Beam over Ice Punch that we only got to use for one single battle. Cool. And you might expect me to rush Psychic real quick, but I don't. Because I'll say this again and again, Erica is a very strong gym leader in red and blue, but in Pokemon Yellow, she's incredibly weak. And since we have ice moves, there's no reason not to just go ahead and decimate her for some really quick experience. And I often forget Erica, so let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. It's a very quick series of one shots. Tangle is the worst Pokemon in the game. We can move on. We already know. And finally, when we get done with that, I do pay a visit to Mr. Psychic and Saffron, and we finally get that sweet TM for Psychic. Now, I think it's really funny, and I, I haven't looked into it myself. I probably could, but I'm not going to. But Psychic Tops, if you're a Psychic Top, you're probably going to learn a Psychic move, but Jinx just doesn't learn any. It only gets Psychic. I guess off the top of my head, Executor doesn't either, but it's a, it's a stone evolution, so it makes sense. I don't think Abra does either. So there's probably more than I think, and I probably just contradicted myself. But we get Psychic. It's really good. Let's go. Next up is Pokemon Tower, and we'll be skipping this segment today. But it bears repeating that Psychic and Ice is just really strong. Ice Beam and Psychic on any Pokemon are pretty formidable. But when you add the Stab bonus to it, it's actually really strong. It's, it's a kind of a shame that Jinx doesn't start off with any special moves, because it feels really good at this point in the game. But let's just skip over the Pokemon Tower segment and pick up right after that. I then pick up the final HMs of the run down in the Safari Zone, and then I decide to go ahead and try my luck on Koganex, because I'm just assuming that really high special with Psychic is just going to be enough to get past this one pretty easy. And it turns out to be a pretty good call. Psychic is just really strong. I'm able to mow down the Venonats. Now the Venomoth is faster. It should be because it's 13 levels higher. It does have Leech Life and that is super effective against my Psychic Topping. And I guess that could be scary if maybe I got chipped down a little bit. Maybe it crit. Or maybe it got off a double team and I started missing. So it's something to look for. But it really wasn't that bad all things considered. The next stop in our journey is going to Silphco. And I do go to the 10th floor to pick up the Rare Candy and the Carbos. But outside of that, we're strictly on business here today. And that means it's time for rival number 5. Sandslash is first. It's weak to ice. We're faster than it. And that's all I really need to say. Up next is Ninetales. And this is a fire top. We're ice. We haven't seen much fire yet. But it could be a problem. I go for Psychic. I get the crit, but it's not enough to one-shot the Ninetales, and I get hit with an Ember. Thankfully, it doesn't have Flamethrower just yet, and it really doesn't do a whole lot. It's a weak move. I got high special, and I take out Ninetales on the next turn. Cloyster is next. It doesn't have high special, so whatever it does to us, it's not going to do much damage. A couple of Psychics take it out, and there's no reason to linger on this little clam. Kadabra is next, and we're in a pretty good position here. It only has Psychic moves, and us being a Psychic type means we resist it. And we have Body Slam for that nice physical damage against its frail little body, and we can move on to the Jolteon at the end of the fight. And the problem here is that it's really quick, and it's one of the two Pokemon that have access to Pin Missile. It does super effective damage, and we get hit with a couple of them, and it does massive damage, taking us all the way down to 10 HP. But luckily, I am able to two-shot it, barely hang on, and we take this battle. Now, looking ahead for the next run, it's something that we need to remember, because this one was really close. But for now, it is a first turn victory, and let's just celebrate that for what it is. Let's skip over the rest of Silphco, it's trivial, and instead, afterwards I do pick up Mimic from the little girl in the house, and I'm gonna take it right over to Sabrina, and let's see how that goes, Psychic versus Psychic action. <music> 
Abra's up first, and this little gremlin has one job only, and that's to use Flash on you, but I do outspeed, I go for a nice little lovely kiss, and I just body slam it down right after that. Kadabra's next. I do outspeed it, but I can't one-shot it. That means it gets off a of Kinesis, and even though I don't miss the next body slam and I take it out, I get the feeling that it might cause some trouble coming up on the Alakazam. And I do some really good damage with Body Slam, and there's a couple of points in this little battle right here where I pretty much could have won if I would have hit the Body Slam, but that Kinesis was just what Sabrina needed. I missed just enough to allow the Alakazam to get ahead, and eventually it does take me out, and that's the first time we reset in quite a while, so I'm really not too worried about it. And on round two, I do learn my lesson. To avoid Kinesis, I use Lovely Kiss, and I take it out, and we go back to the Alakazam, and at this point I'm thinking, hey, I haven't really relied on sleep status yet. Let me just put this Alakazam to sleep with Lovely Kiss. Now normally I don't like to rely on the sleep status, and I really have it up to this point in the run, and if you don't like that I'm using it for this run, get over yourself. And now it's time for a nice brisk swim. Well, it would be. We have to do a little bit of fishing first, guys. I'm really close to the next level up, as you can see. And that means we have to find us a little tentacle here. And we top off this next level. And then we can go ahead and take our nice brisk swim down to Cinnabar. We're not doing anything extra today. In fact, I'm really scared of fire with Jinx. And after a little bit of tombstoner brother i dive straight in without using any candies just to see how hot this battle can actually be you hear that guys it's time for lovely kiss you didn't think i wasn't gonna choose this spot did you now the real reason here i didn't want to use all my candies i figured it might be tough in the late game and since this was a blind attempt i didn't want to just out level and use rare candies and i wanted to see if hey maybe i could just choose this spot use sleep status and get past because i mean if you got sleep even haunter and gengar have to use it for a couple of battles so don't judge me if you're judging me type in judge down in the comment and maybe give me a little kiss emoji give me a kiss emoji and then follow that up with a little hot dog emoji i don't know why it's nothing sexual i just i like hot dogs in all honesty without being goofy it really did surprise me that i was able to get past that one so easy I know that my luck won't be that great every single time, but it does mean that I don't have to over level and do a bunch of extra battles and use a bunch of candy that I can fairly reliably get that 75% chance to put it to sleep. And I think on the next run, we'll use a similar strategy, but we'll have to see. Now there's only one gem left and it's the infamous yellow version Giovanni. There are some scary things on the team, but with eye stab moves, I really wasn't that worried about it. But let's stop talking, let's just dive in and see how it actually went. Doug Trio is first, and it has 133 speed, it outspeeds us, but we get a guard spec by Silvco. And that means I am able to get past it, but I'm not feeling too great about that because the Persian is even faster than it. I do get lucky here, it outspeeds me and it uses Screech and that means that I'm going to get absolutely decimated with my pathetic 33 HP right now, but it badge boosts me guys. That means I get off back to back ice beams and I'm able to avoid any catastrophes this early and it's looking pretty good right now honestly because I should outspeed both the Nidto Queen and King and I got ice super effective moves or psychic, whatever my choice may be. But ladies and gentlemen, when the AI wants to cheat, it will. And I get paralyzed by a thunder from the Nidal Queen after my ice beam is just not enough to knock it out. And you know what that means. Even though I'm able to barely scrounge by and make it past the Nidal King, you already know that my half, my 10 speed, my pathetic poor little Jinx baby with 10 speed is about to get rock slide into the shadow realm and I can barely stand to look at it guys. And if you guys want a little cut from behind the scenes, even if I was 10 levels higher, the Rhydon could do 210 damage maximum with a non-crit rock slide, so needless to say, we're fucked. I did pick up Blizzard down in Pokemon Mansion, and since I was just off of knocking out that Nidto Queen, I am going to learn it over Ice Beam here. And I'm still not going to use any rare candies because these first runs are for testing stuff out. I go back in, I'm optimistic, and I immediately get hit with an earthquake crit. 
and that's probably not going to happen too often, so let's go back again. Okay, another earthquake crit. That's cool. That can't happen again. Okay, third try. I get sand attack. Whatever. I go for psychic just to save the blizzard PP, and it goes for dig. And guess what? Guys, it crits a third time in a row, so at that point, I'm getting pretty angry, so I retreat. I battle this one trainer since I'm so close to leveling up right here. And I go ahead and use a couple of rare candies to get up to 135 speed so that I outspeed the Doug Trio to see if that will do the trick. And now that I outspeed the Doug Trio, it's no problem, it goes down. 135 is a speed tie against the Persian, and luckily I just win every speed tie here. I can't quite one shot it, and you get to see how much massive damage it does to me with a slash. It pretty much chops half my head off. I don't know if I'll be kissing anybody anytime soon after this one. And on the Nidal Queen, I thought, well, I was really close to knocking it out with Ice Beams. I got a couple more levels now, so I should just one-shot it with the Psychic. And the answer is it barely hangs on. You can barely see the red on its health bar, and it knocks me out for yet another reset. I go back in. We already know. I used Psychic on the Doug Trio because I fat finger my button somehow. And luckily, it gets a guard spec from Silfco, Giovanni throwing the match yet again, and I'm able to get past. As for Persian, it doesn't do any damage for me. For some idiotic reason, I go for Body Slam, and it doesn't do dick for damage, and it goes for Double Team, and I go for the lesser accurate move in Blizzard for some reason. I don't know, my brain was turned off, but eventually, it uses some more Double Teams, and I'm able to take it out without actually losing any health. I have learned my lesson from all the other times. I do use Blizzard on the Nidal Queen. It's definitely a one-shot. But I do have to save one Blizzard for Rhydon, so I use Psychic on Nidal King. It's not enough, but it only uses Leer, and I'm able to get past after that. And at that point, it's pretty much 90% chance just to obliterate the Rhydon. I don't miss. I hit it, and that's the battle over. And this one wasn't that great. Giovanni rarely is, and... It's not too bad with some optimizations and the fact that we barely used any candies here and we really didn't prepare on this blind run. I'm not worried about it for the next run, but we'll talk about what we did to change it around when we get to that segment of the video. That leads us directly into a, another showdown with rival number six. And let's just see how that goes. Sand Slash is first. We outspeed and have super effective damage. We can move on. Now as for moving on, we got these annoying little eggs, they are weak to Blizzard, and we don't miss thankfully, and we take it out. Now we got the Fire Top Nine Tails coming right in, and I have some really bad luck here. I miss not one, not two, well actually just two Blizzards, and during that time I get hit with a critical ember, and I get burned, and I'm getting chipped down, and Blizzard can't one shot the Nine Tails, and that means I just, I miss too many times, and that's another reset. Coming in hot on the second attempt on the Nine Tails, I decide enough is enough. It's time to kiss this little cute fox. I put it to sleep, and at that point, there's nothing it can do. A bunch of psychics can take it out. We hit level 48, and now let's look at the next opponent. Cloyster comes out, and Cloyster's just kind of useless this run. It is what it is. It misses Supersonic. It goes down. Now let's look at the Kadabra. And it tries its best to use Recover and stall us out a little bit, but Body Slam is just a little bit too much for it to overcome, and since we resist its moves, we can look at the end at this maybe problematic Jolteon. Let's see. It outspeeds, it goes for Pin Missile, and it turns out that it really doesn't do that much damage, so maybe I was worried for nothing, but just in case, what's a little, let's give it a little, a little kiss, and then we'll just take it out. And that's the fight over. This one really wasn't too bad. I did have the reset, but it was some really unfortunate luck. But I'm really not worried about this one. And now we can kind of focus ahead on the Elite Four. And here, guys, I'm going to take a different approach than I normally do. I'm not going to use any rare candies. Because at the end of this blind run, going into the optimized runs, I want to know how many rare candies I could use earlier, but still be able to beat the Elite Four. So we're going to see what the minimum level I could do this at is. Dugong is up first for Lorelei, and on turn two, it's going to use that rest. But here, a couple of psychics take it down, and it doesn't even get the chance. As for Cloyster, we've seen this time and time again already. It's very frail in the special department, and I'm able to quickly take it out. And this one isn't looking too bad. That is until we get to Slowbro. I really don't have a good answer here. I haven't learned Mimic or anything like that. 
and it's just able to hang on and slowly chip me down while I do resisted damage to it. I didn't bother to go for Lovely Kiss, and by the time this one's said and done, I'm pretty much barely hanging on going into the Jinx Mirror match. And at this point, I just kind of concede defeat. I don't go for any miraculous Lovely Kiss cheese strategies. I go for a body slam, let the chips fall where they lay, and I get taken out with a thrash, and that's the first reset of the Elite Four. Now our attack is really weak, Body Slam has ran its course, and we can just already tell that Mimic is going to be the way to go, especially for this fight, so I learn it, and I also use some rare candies. I have like 9 of them left at this point, so I use a few of them, I get up to level 53 for that nice damage rounding number, and let's just go right back into it. The Dugong and the Cloister weren't really problems on the first attempt, so there's really not much to say about this other than the Cloister actually hits me with a spot cannon and does some pretty hefty damage to me before I even make it to the problematic point in the fight, but let's just keep trucking ahead. And on this attempt, the Slowbro just uses Withdrawal like a hundred times, and during that time, I am able to mimic Amnesia, I'm able to fully set up, and even though my damage is resisted, my special is 634, and that means that I'm able just to wipe it out fairly quickly. After that, I really don't have a good answer for Jinx, and I was hoping that since my special's so high that I would do a little bit more damage, but I can't one hit, and a double slap takes me down into the red, and I am able to finish it off after that, and we can finally look at the Lapras. And guys, I make a huge blunder here. I don't know any damage calculations. This is a blind run. I haven't done any prep. And I just thought, hey, let's just go for Lovely Kiss rather than go for Psychic for what's probably a one shot. And I miss, and that's another reset. On this attempt, I get extremely unlucky on the Dugong. I get crit, and by the time I'm even done with it, I'm just getting Bubble Beam. Bubble Beam is just doing work on me. I'm down to 68 HP, and when the Cloister comes in, I have to actually put it to sleep just so I can maybe have a chance at this one. And this pretty much means for the rest of the fight, I have to be cautious and utilize Lovely Kiss more than I normally would, and that's what I do on the Slow Bro. I do the usual, I Amnesia, up to the plus six boost, I take it out, I make sure it stays asleep, and the same exact thing go for the final two Pokemon. It's Lovely Kiss into a sweep, but we do find out that Lapras can be a one shot with the plus six amnesia boost. So that's pretty good to know next time. Now this fight didn't look that great. There were some hiccups here, but remember that this is a blind run. A lot of my videos, you guys will see fully optimized runs, but this is kind of the process you have to go through to learn stuff. And the guys who watch my streams, you already know that's how it goes. Sometimes we'll spend like, 20 minutes resetting on a fight over and over just so I can learn it for the next time. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, Bruno is very fortunate that I'm even showing him in this video. I'm just full of the holiday cheer and I figured it wouldn't be a solo run video without Bruno in it. And I'm a psychic type and ice type so I'm just, I got the onyx covered, I got the, the fighting types covered. This is a done deal. This is one of the easiest Bruno fights ever and I feel like I say that too much. Agatha is up next. And maybe it is a Christmas miracle because Agatha, like it is in some runs, Agatha's actually easier than Bruno. Or maybe they're just tied. I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. Was Agatha easier or was Bruno easier? Because I outspeed everything and I have Psychic. It's super effective against her whole team. And this one's over pretty quick. Now, I don't know if I could one-shot that last Gengar, but I did crit. And I'm not going to J-Rose it and redo it for no reason. Next up is Lance, and I debated heavily on if I needed the Reflect TM to mitigate some of that Hyper Beam damage, and maybe I should have, because look here guys, it's everyone's favorite, turn one critical hit Hyper Beam knockout, yes, I love it. And I'd estimate on this fight, I don't know if Hyper Beam would kill you every time, but Lovely Kiss guys, the answer's Lovely Kiss, put it to sleep take it out, and once you take out the Gyarados, everything else on the entire team is weak to ice, and we just start mowing down his team, but on the Dragonite, I miss Blizzard, guys, and it goes for Fire Blast, and I pucker up, and I don't mean a lovely kiss. And even though I get burned, my special's just so high that it really doesn't do that much damage. I'm able to connect, and we take the fight. This one really wasn't that bad. And now, there's only the champion standing in our way. How will it go? Sandslash is first. I outspeed. I have Blizzard. I've said this a lot. But, 
I, I don't know what I want to mimic here. Do I want to take Earthquake? Do I want to take Slash? It's our first attempt. I take Slash just to see how it goes, and I end up taking a Slash, and it does so much damage, guys. It's not even fair, and but we take it out. We move on to the next. In comes Alakazam. I'm too low to really risk just going straight damage, so you already know what time it is. It's time for that lovely kiss. And Slash actually does pretty decent damage here. I'm able to two-shot it, and we can move on to the Exeggutor. Now, one of the key things that you want to know for these runs is if you can actually just one-shot it naturally. But here I crit, and maybe we won't ever get the chance to find out. Cloyster is next, and I probably didn't even need to use Lovely Kiss here, but I do. A couple of psychics take it out, and let's just look ahead and see the real problems of the fight. In comes Ninetales. I go for the Lovely Kiss. It connects but Ninetales wakes up, and the AI is really trying here to not stay asleep, but I do crit on the blizzard, it doesn't quite knock it out, and Ninetales does wake up, but it's just a little bit too late, and I'm able to finish it off, and now we can take a look at that Jolteon in the back. It comes in, it's as fast as ever, it outspeeds, goes for a pin missile, it's pretty scary, but I hang on, and you guys guessed it, I connect with that lovely kiss one more time for the road, and I'm able to take it out before it wakes up, And that's it. Jinx has done it for the first blind run. Now the main thing to know, obviously the Brock split is just god awful. I don't know if there's really much I can do for that. But the key thing to note here is the strategy of using as little rare candies as I can means that I was actually able to save five. I didn't use five rare candies this run. And that means when we look back on some of the problematic fights that we had, I can use candies. And I can really just minimize some of those areas, and I can probably get through with a lot less than 13 resets. I can also analyze the damage ranges, and see when I need to swap up to Blizzard, and all that kind of stuff. See if Lovely Kiss is actually needed in a lot of situations. And our time here on this run was 3 hours and 56 minutes, but I'm pretty confident. I think I could save almost 30 minutes in an optimized run, so why don't we just find out. So don't go anywhere guys, the optimized section of this really doesn't take that long, it's really condensed, we're only going to go over a few sections, so if you're thinking about turning off the video because you're worried that I'm going to do an entire run in detail, that's just not the case, but let's get to it. So going into the optimized run, the main thing that you really want to try to figure out is how you can lessen this Brock split because it's easily the worst part of the game. And we have some advantages obviously over the first, and that's the fact that we know what level we need to do Brock. We don't have to do anything extra, but I did have some ideas to get this time down a little bit. Rather than start grinding heavily and battling every trainer I can, I do the normal route. I battle the optional rival, I battle the first optional bug catcher in Viridian, then I battle the mandatory Viridian, and I head straight into Pewter to do something we haven't done in quite a while. And that's some good old fashioned Light Years Junior Trainer blackout grinding. So what this does basically is I kill the Diglett, I get some really good experience for it, I let the Sancher take me out, I rinse and I repeat, and if you're wondering, why this doesn't count as a reset, I'm not resetting the game. This is like a tactical blackout, the way I see it, and it's just a little bit faster than grinding, so I thought I could do this and really speed up the process. And Jinx ends up being a little bit stronger than I expected. I'm only able to Light Years Junior Trainer grind up to level 12, and it's only really just a few blackouts before I'm pretty much forced to defeat the trainer, because I have no other choice. But remember guys, I saved a few trainers back in Viridian Forest, so I retreat, I take them out, and then it's on to wild Pokemon grinding once again. And something I didn't think about until I was doing the voiceover and post-production is that I was able to defeat Geodude at level 15. I'm not sure how consistent that is, but when I hit level 15, I could do the same blackout tactic on Geodude. It would be kind of slow, but it doesn't have defense curl on yellow, so I do think it might have been actually faster, but I'm not willing to do another Jinx run. But instead, let's just skip ahead to level 18 after we grind a bunch of Pokemon to get there. And finally, at about an hour and eight minutes, I am able to make it back to Brock, and this battle's really consistent with Lick. I mean, it better be, we had to grind so much. But the main point here is after we're doing some kissing and some licking, is that I'll end this split at 1 hour, 9 minutes, and 57 seconds. And that's a 7 minute and 14 second difference from our first run, which is very positive indeed. 
And then, like I already mentioned earlier in the video, I do pick up Mega Punch. Now, this is a time save on several battles, and the extra PP is always welcome, but this isn't the best optimization of the run. I had kind of a Eureka moment. I was looking at the damage ranges to see if stuff was possible, but let's just hop into Cerulean. And this time, the biggest change in the entire run is that I go straight to Misty. It doesn't look like a great matchup, you wouldn't think anyway, but it's actually not that bad. With Lovely Kiss, Sleep Status with a Mega Punch, you can actually get by this one pretty easy. I don't have a reset, and although it does take a while, the payoff is massive. Getting access to Bubble Beam now means that this huge cluster of trainers are gonna be mostly one-shots. It's really gonna speed up. And you notice from the split time, I have the Dig Rocket Grunt as the split time, and that's because I did Misty before I did Misty on the other run. So to be fair, I'm just gonna do it when we finish up Cerulean City as a whole. And by the time we wrap everything up and we're done with the Dig Grunt, I have a whopping 16 minute and 55 second advantage over the first run, and we're really cruising. I'm hoping I can keep this up. And just since we're keeping score, the Giovanni number one fight is a 19 minute 11 second difference, so I am keeping up pace and extending the lead, and it's worth noting that I do hold off on buying a little later in this run, because it turns out that if you just have a little bit more money and you can eke out just a couple more vitamins, it really helps to have those extra calciums in the late game. After a little bit, we head down to Koga, and the next little optimization, I kind of hinted at it in the first run, is that it would be nice to outspeed Venomoth, and since I had a lot of rare candies left at the end of the run, I used four of them here. That allows me to outspeed the Venomoth, and this one's just a complete tear. I'm in range of 100% chance to one-shot all the Venonats, and I crit on the Venomoth, which means it goes down in a single hit, and this is a very quick battle. But my lead did suffer just a little bit. I lost about three minutes, but I'm still in the lead by about 16 minutes over the first run. Next up is rival number five, and you might notice that I'm resetless right now, and it comes really close to ending right here. This is a great battle. Now, it's normal up to the point I get to the nine tails, and I get burned. So, I don't really go down quick, but I start getting chipped down and chipped down through the nine tails, the cloister, the cadabra, and finally, I'm pretty much dead to rights looking at the Jolteon, but in this case, I do outspeed, and I know my only chance right here is to land a lovely kiss, I should be just enough healthy enough to survive two burn ticks and if I can hit the sleep and hit two moves I should win and that's what happens. This was very close and at this point I was rooting for Jinx so hard to have a resetless run but we'll see how that goes. As far as the splits go, I gained a little bit of ground back, I'm roughly 17 minutes ahead, and we can skip to the next contested point from the last run. Sabrina isn't important, we don't have to look at it, but it is worth noting that I do use four more rare candies before this fight, because my experience is at a really good range at the moment. And right before Blaine, I do learn Blizzard here, uh, and I use three PP ups on it just to make it a little bit more consistent in case I miss. I think right before I did this run, I was just going to keep Ice Beam through the whole run, but Blizzard really made Blaine a lot more consistent and made me hit a lot harder. As for Blaine, all I really got to say is thank God for bad AI and thank God for lovely Kiss. This Sleep Powder clone unique move really came in clutch here and I almost died. This is another moment where I came within inches of death, but I'm able to pull it out. And last time the Giovanni fight was hard. But with all these rare candies and optimizations, look at it. It's just five blizzards, pretty much just dead and gone, very quick. And we are 23 minutes ahead at this point, and we don't have to look at rival number six. I used three more candies, all of them I have left. I learned Mimic, and I started the Elite Four start as soon as I walked through the door. And on the last run, we had a reset on Lance from my Hyper Beam crit, and this time, I dared him to. I had the perfect record, and I didn't think he had the guts to do it, and he doesn't, and I'm able to take it out with two blizzards, no lovely kisses required, and we're going into the champion fight undefeated. Let's see if Jinx can keep it up. Sand Slash goes according to plan, and I don't put the Alakazam to sleep, and just because I'm on such a good streak right now, I wanted to play it safe, I wanted to mimic recover, just to ensure the victory, and what ends up happening is I take a Kinesis. Now it doesn't really seem to matter at first. I take some damage here and there, I'm getting by, then the Nine Tails comes in. And that accuracy drop means that I will not be kissing any foxes today, and that means I go down for the very first reset of the run. Now this one was kind of a heartbreaker, not gonna lie. On the next attempt, I learned my lesson. I put Alakazam to sleep, I take recover, 
I blizzard it a couple of times and we move on and I get chipped down pretty good and it's looking a little dicey here. I'm missing lovely kisses and then all of a sudden Ninetales crits on a fire spin. It's doing heavy super effective damage but finally that very clutch lovely kiss comes in. I get it to sleep. I'm able to use recover once and two psychics take it out and that should be the hardest part over right? Well guys, everything was optimized but I overlooked one tiny detail, that was Jolteon's speed. I'm 4 off from tying it and I didn't really look at it, I didn't think I had to. And even here I don't try to put it to sleep, I try to go straight blizzard thinking I can win. I get hit super hard by a pin missile, I don't knock it out and then it knocks me out with another pin missile. So that's reset number 2. On attempt number 3, disaster strikes again, I get hit with another Kinesis. And this one's kind of embarrassing, let's just hurry up and get through it. Uh, the TLDR is I get my ass beat by a tree. On the next attempt, I'm able to take recover, not take a kinesis, and I'm moving on. But I'm getting a little chipped down once again. The executor's doing some work. But what really gets kind of scary here is that the cloister gets me down to 9 HP. Now, if you would have panicked, you would have just knocked this thing out real quick. But I kept my cool. I put it to sleep. And that allows me to recover two times to get back up to full health. And that means looking at these final two Pokemon, I'm actually able to be in a way better position. And I just don't play any games with the Ninetales. 75% chance to sleep with Lovely Kiss. I'm taking it. I hit it. A couple of Psychics take it out. And now we're at the end of the fight at full health. And here, I'm calling Jolteon's bluff. I don't think two pin missiles can out damage two blizzards or whatever moves I decide to use. It uses one, it doesn't quite do half health, I do heavy damage and that puts it within range of a psychic and it just misses its second pin missile for good measure and I take the run. Now did I want the perfect run? Yes, I did. I definitely wanted it. It's a heartbreaker that it happened at the very end, but it's still pretty impressive that a Pokemon like Jinx that had such a rough start can make it that far and honestly, kind of dominate. It reminds me a little bit of Abra, but not as extreme. And the adjustment to pick up Bubble Beam as soon as you get access to it was definitely a game changer and that's where I cut the bulk of my time. That first run really helped me plan out things and when it's all said and done we are a couple of levels higher but the main thing is we finished with a final time of 3 hours, 29 minutes and about 31 seconds. So it's a 26 minute, 52 second improvement, almost 27 minutes and that's definitely really good. I really wasn't serious when I said I could probably shave off about 30 minutes earlier but here we are and it looks pretty good. So now we can bring up that tier list. It being in the mid three hour range, it's definitely a B tier Pokemon. And for me, I think it fits after Butterfree. Now, Mr. Mime, if you don't know, the grayed out runs are old runs. I don't know if I've streamed some of these runs and haven't updated the tier list yet. I don't know, you'll probably let me know in the comments, but Mr. Mom is probably better than what it shows right there, but about Butterfree after that seems about right to me, but B tier is really solid for a Pokemon that has a hour plus Brock split. The start really wasn't that great, but it really, it isn't that bad all things considered. If I had to describe Jinx, I would say it's like a pretty good executor, I guess. Or maybe a Polyrath with a way worse start. But speaking of Butterfree, there's some information that I figured out about Butterfree a while ago, and I think we might have to see another Butterfree run on the channel soon. And as for Mewtwo, I couldn't let you guys go without one more big ol' smooch. So we put Mewtwo to sleep, we spam some blizzards, and then just to rub salt in the wound, we finish it off with a psychic. And speaking of one more smooch, a big special smooch to my channel members. Thank you for the support. I appreciate you guys a lot. Remember, if you aren't on the list, I have been really grinding in the month of November and December to get out a ton of videos, so this might not be updated, but you will be on a video eventually. I'll shout you out on the stream if you come there. But anyway, special thanks to Mariah Thompson, Meeves, JWJ, Mutus Dozen, D's Master, TR2G Hipster, Cheesy Speakeasy, Josh from Mint, and Kendall C. God bless you, and thanks for watching the video, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.